All right, how you guys doing? Well, it finally arrived after a little over six weeks. It takes a while, so. But I finally got my custom-made Hendrix neck from Music Craft, and I thought you guys would enjoy unboxing it with me. I'll put all the specs in the description. Here it is, haven't opened it yet. And uh, we'll go over what I did. I tried to get it as vintage close as I could, but I made a couple of little modern changes to it to make it hopefully a little more playable for me. But uh, I'll go through all that. Let's, let's open it up. Okay, I bought this neck as an experiment for my reverse headstock Nash Strat. And it's got a 1.65 inch nut width, but it's got a 10 degree radius. And that's, it's got fairly sharp edges and it's just uncomfortable, especially with my thumb. I do love the seven and a quarter radius with the rounded, you know, worn out vintage edges. So I got this semi rolled, but we'll go through all that. And it is still 1.65 inch nut width. But uh, we'll talk about it as soon as we open it up here because I've got a lot of work to do and it may take me a week, maybe longer, to install this thing because I have, it's not just a matter of getting a neck from them and just screwing it right on. I ordered the nut, but they don't adjust the height or anything, they just cut the slots. So that makes it kind of hard. If you don't have a luthier around, you're going to end up having to take it to somebody to get it re-leveled. Uh, they said you might, some people said they needed to get a leveling on their frets. I hope that's not the case. And that wasn't the way to open this. Let's try this method. Now, the changes I made, and I may regret it, hopefully not is that I got, I kind of bought into that roasted maple fad they've got going right now, mainly because it gets rid of the moisture and I thought, well, maybe that'll make it a little more like a vintage neck. It won't be all, you know, green wood. It'll be kind of worn in, but it turns out that stuff is so hard, it's really hard to drill. I mean, I think you can break a drill bit and just, you gotta be super careful because it cracks, splits. So it's not easy. And also I have a fender decal. Let me go get that fender decal. I ordered this uh, decal from Luthier Guitar Decals in Ontario. If you want any, I, they have all of them as far as I can tell. So I also have to install this decal, which is a left-handed decal, which is kind of cool. It'll be upside down when I'm playing it, but I wanted it to look like an authentic left-handed guitar. I'm going to move this out of the way. Okay, now a couple of things I did that hopefully I don't regret, but I have to live with it, is uh, during the ordering process, I mentioned that I, I said, do you have the exact size and shape of the old CBS Fender uh, headstock? And he said, well, somebody just called a, a little while ago, a few months ago or something, and said that our specs, our dimensions weren't exactly vintage correct, and we came up with some new dimensions. And I said, well... That sounds good to me. Let's go with the new dimensions. And it's supposed to be extended or something. I don't know. We'll compare it to the, to the Nash headstock because I think they're licensed by the next they get are licensed too. But Music Craft does have a Fender license so that they can copy the shapes and everything. That's why I went with Music Craft. Now, now that's already something I didn't want, but I guess I stuck with it now. It looks beautiful to me. Can you see that? Nice reverse headstock. It looks like the right size to me. Music craft right there. Licensed by Fender. 
what I was intending on getting was the, uh, I wanted the roasted neck back here, but I wanted the standard maple fingerboard and I didn't get that. Now, I don't know if that's a manufacturing process thing. It doesn't specify on their order form. Uh, I just assumed it wasn't going to be roasted. I, I wanted, actually, I wanted kind of a two-tone look where this was natural maple and this was, you know, darker. So I've got a kind of a dark face here, which is, you know, a little bit disappointing to me. But like I said, it may have been a manufacturing thing where they had to put the maple board on the, the veneer cap as I ordered and then roast it. I'm not sure, but it looks pretty, uh, pretty basic. I just hope it fits. And I, like I said, I'm gonna have to put this decal on here and those aren't always easy because I tried once years ago and messed it up, which would go like that, like so. I got to figure out how to line it up. I think it probably goes about like that. And so let's go over the other specs. I think they give you instructions here on how to drill the wood. Yeah. And I, let's just say, what is fret sprout? Okay. They describe that how humidity affects your guitar. Now that's one thing that I might be happy that they ended up roasting the the neck because that'll take the moisture out and maybe that'll reduce the fret sprout. They feel pretty, pretty smooth right now. Maybe a little bit of smoothing on the bottom edge. You know, you definitely don't want to cut yourself. I could probably get a luthier to uh, smooth those out some. I can feel some pretty sharp edges. Uh, and that's something I wish I was good at, but I'm not, and I really don't have a luthier too close. I forgot to spec. This is the old vintage style truss rod. It's a standard truss rod. It only goes one direction. I was a little nervous about that. This being so stiff, I was afraid if I got a back bow, I'd be stuck with it. So hopefully it doesn't back bow and I can't adjust it, but it's gorgeous. I got the regular, uh, Half sawn. Uh, I'll put all the specs in there. I forgot exactly. But one of the things I wanted to try, it, I said if Hendrix was playing with those standard fender frets, I'm going to get standard fender frets. And that's what these are. They're fairly skinny, not that high. So as far as me bending strings, I may regret it. But I, I just wanted to see what it was like. It might even be faster. You know how Jimmy, I, I don't think he actually got under the string that much. I think he was probably, his hands were so big that he was just pulling the string up on top of the fret. I usually have to get under the string kind of and push it up. So we'll see how that goes. I, I'm not so sure I'll be able to play this thing. But that's it. The, the other thing, uh, as far as the rolled edges go, semi-rolled, uh, not as probably as much rolling as I would hoped for. It's almost as sharp as the Nash neck. They have a full roll that maybe I should have done. And also, but can you see the cap there? It's a two piece maple neck with a maple veneer cap. And that's what I wanted. You know, a lot of time, most of the time, this would be a rosewood cap, but it's maple and I really wanted it to pop out and I should have put the note on there. You, you probably can specify not to roast the cap, but I think overall, since it's two pieces of wood that it may prevent problems down the road that they're both kind of stable. That neck being the 10 degree radius, what I got here, was a compound radius. So this starts at seven and a quarter and then it gradually goes to nine and a half. I, I went to, I always go a little flatter up here because you know, on a seven and a quarter neck, sometimes you can bend and it'll fret out. And 
And I've never had that problem with my seven and a quarter necks, but I didn't want to have that problem because I have had guitars that do that. So seven and a quarter here, nine and a half here. And that's it. I've got to get my tuners off the other neck, put them in here, and this is where it's going to get tricky. I got to drill all these holes. I'm not sure about the mounting here. I'm probably going to have to open these up a little bit because that could split and that would be devastating. Let's compare the sizes here. And there is definitely a difference. I like the Music Craft one a lot more now because I don't know if you can see it. Let's see that edge on the bottom right here is a little more gradual and sticking out a little farther from the nut. So it gives your hand, especially on a reverse headstock, gives your hand a little more room when you're down here. See, so it makes it comfortable because a lot of times you see Jimmy way down here past the nut, you know, especially when he does those behind the nut bends. But when you're down here doing this, it's just a lot of room for your hands. So that's kind of nice. Look from the top. And you kind of see that this curve, whoop, this curve here go, extends out a little bit, quite a bit actually. And this is the part I think was the vintage correct stuff that that guy called in about. Line this up. It sticks out a little bit farther here. And here, you can't see it, but it sticks out a little bit farther. So you can see that you can you can kind of tell here the little ball is going out. Now they said 0.4 inches longer. It's not quite that long, which I'm glad because I was a little worried that'd be too far. There you go. I think I'll just let it leave it at this so you can see how it goes out a little farther. Now this is an oil finish that they put on here. They, apparently they have to put a finish on there so that it will have a warranty. If you go no finish, there's no warranty. So this is a double coat of hand rubbed oil finish, which I feels fantastic. It says the same oil fender uses. I so said there's so many options. That's why I was reluctant to ever order one because when I got into all the different options, I was bewildered and couldn't figure out exactly what I needed to order. But I think I did it this time, except for that, that one. Oh, and I forgot to say, you know, I think I got it except for this being roasted and not standard. That would have looked pretty, huh? To have this maple on top of that neck, I think that would have been really cool looking. That's not what happened. I, I, I should send him a note to see if that would have been possible because I didn't specify roasted. There is no roasted choice on the drop down menus. And the other thing I was going to say, I was reluctant to get these small frets, mainly because I would wear them out probably in a month. These are stainless steel, so hopefully they'll last a long time. Now, if I, if I can just bend them, there's a really nice looking nut, if you look at that. Uh, it might be just right. You know, all I have to do is string it up and see if the strings are the right height from the first fret. I might not have to do anything to it. And this is what got me off on that larger head of Hendrix's. Because if you look at a lot of photos, his string tree is really close to the back of the first tuner. And I said, well, that, I tried that with this one. And I don't know if you can see, but I put the hole right here and put it in there. And it was just, I didn't have a long enough screw or something. But as soon as I tightened up the strings, it popped the string tree right out of the hole, kind of stripped it. So I had to move it back and most of them are lined up with about even maybe a little bit farther up with the second tuning peg. But if you look at most of Hendrix's photos, it's down here. So I said, well, it makes sense if that's an extended head that they could put it down here. But a lot of the other strats, you'll see it's still here. So I, he sticks his cigarette in here, you know, the string tree is right here. And I was saying, maybe there's too much gap there. And 
and he moved it just so it would hold his cigarette better. I don't know. Either way, that's speculation. On the neck profile, that's real important. That was one of the hardest things to decide on. So I took my 64 neck and measured it. That's how I got to 1.65. So this is based off my 1964 neck, which is my most comfortable neck. It's a little fatter than this one, but uh, I almost chose, I can't remember, uh, some type of C shape. They have like 40 different profiles. They have, uh, and that includes some of the tele profiles, but mostly Strat. But I talked to uh, Scott over there at MusicCraft, and I said, what is AYS? And he said, that is asymmetrical. I said, well, that's what I want, because I'm pretty sure on my 64 Strat, that's what it is. It's fatter on the top and thinner on the bottom. He said, yeah, a lot of uh, vintage necks were like that. Probably can't see it here but it's a little fatter, rounded here, and then it slants off a little bit. If you look at their neck profile sheet, you'll see what I'm talking about. But it's the AYS8497, which is the thickness here, 84.84 inches, I think, and 12th fret would be 0.97. I think mine was 0.99 on the 64 and probably 8.7 six or something, I can't remember exactly, but the 64 was just a hair fatter. It was almost too fat, so I said, well, this will be perfect. And I can see by, or feel it, that this neck is gonna be a dream. I mean, what's nice about that, it really fits in your hand great. Right here, that fatness kind of fits in there, and then that thin part gives you all this room to move your fingers a little more. And you, and you really don't notice it, it feels like a standard C shape, but it's there and it feels great. And also, interestingly, when you go on the drop down or somewhere, that particular one I was happy to see when I picked it, in parentheses, it said SRV. So apparently that was Stevie's favorite profile too. So I said, well, now I know it's the right one. It's uh, AYS 8497, and then in parentheses it says SRV. I had to pound these, not pound, but pop these out with a dowel and a hammer. So they, they fit pretty tight, these bushings. They fit the same on this neck, and I'm going to have to sand those holes out to try to get these to fit in there by hand, which is going to take me a while because I hear that stuff is not easy to sand. Because if you try to force these in there, you will split this, and that'll be the last thing I want to do. So I'm going to get these. That's going to take a while. I'm going to have to take a, a dowel, stick it in there with some sandpaper wrapped around it, and just sit there and do this. There's a left-handed on a reverse head sock. You have to have the left-handed clusons. Oh, and I did, I was curious mostly about the weight because the, uh, the roasting process is supposed to take some of the moisture out and lighten the wood up a little bit. And I was surprised that the roasted neck weighs one pound, 5.7 ounces, and the Nash neck weighs one pound, 4.4 ounces. So the Music Craft neck is 1.3 ounces heavier. And some of it could be the enlarged headstock. I wanted to stay away from the skunk stripe, which this is a one-piece neck. And that was one of the reasons I went to the two-piece neck, so they could put the, put the truss rod from the top and then put the veneer on top of it. I just don't like that piece of wood back there because sometimes you can actually feel it. A little bit different truss rod system between the two. I'm surprised at this little window here where the nut goes through. I'm gonna go get a drill guide for my little electric drill, battery powered drill, and that'll help me drill straight holes anyway and keep it from slipping. And I'm not sure, I might have to open up these holes a little bit
I thought I'd share this tip real quick. I took some of this sandpaper that I had, it's pretty thin, 220, fine. And I stuck it on this dowel, wooden dowel, I just happened to have one. Taped, taped the sandpaper, it doesn't even have to be perfect, it's got a little gap there. Got it down in there, turned it on for about five, 10 seconds, and this thing fit in there, this bushing fit in there perfectly snugly. I had to press it in just the last little bit. A little bit of a pitch difference here. About a half a step. I think it, I went and checked. I don't have perfect pitch, but I think it's a A and an A flat. So this one's a half step lower. I wonder if that'll make a difference in the way the guitar sounds. My dowel sanding tool worked perfectly. These pushed in just the right snugness. Looks really good. And I went and got a, instead of an expensive drill press, I got this drill guide. I don't know if it's gonna help me much, but at least I don't have to worry about Drilling crooked holes, the hard part's getting it up over the top of the hole. The frets are great. I mean, the fret ends, I don't know if you can see that, but they go right to the edge of the bore so you don't have to worry about any of your strings dropping off, which I was a little concerned about. Everything is gorgeous. I mean, they do amazing work. I love the headstock, more of an official fender headstock size. Now, after I got the pegs in there, I mean the bushings, I gotta get all these in there lined up so I can mark where the holes go. Now, just FYI, you guys, this thing made it a dream. You get these little drill guides at Harbor Freight and you can measure exactly how far the drill bit goes down. I had it at 3 eighths of an inch and I drilled these holes, all the holes, in about three minutes, maybe less. And I used a, a little bit bigger maybe, about 564, and the screws go right in. I am going to use a little soap, but I screwed one in. No splitting, no problems. I, I think the people on the forums may have been a little paranoid, but... It's better to be careful than to split your wood. I wanted to show you guys real quick how this little drill guide works. It's a, I'm so happy I bought it. It's the slickest thing. I mean, it's like $14. And when you're drilling these fine holes, like down here, it really helps you guide the drill bit so that you don't have to worry about slipping off of your mark very, or well, it, it's perfect. And now I've got these four holes that one or two of them don't seem to be deep enough. So I'm going to check it out. And all you do is you set this thing. It goes down and you see the, the bits sticking out the bottom. You get an accurate measurement there. I use my little uh, string scale and Put it perfectly flush here and can you see that and then I measure it in 64 and it turned out it was 32 64 so that's the depth I'm gonna go when I push this thing all the way down so when you get to the edge of wood it can be a little difficult but okay all right so here we go this hole and let me put my glasses on. Can't see that great. This hole seems to be a little shallow and I don't want to fight the bottom of these holes with, uh, you know, trying to drive the screw through solid wood, so. So it just had a little bit more to go. 
same on this one and you can work this thing around pretty easily even though the base is fairly big you know I say that you got to kind of jockey it around something like this but that works good there we go It didn't quite go deep enough for me because, like I said, it's going to be hard enough to get these things in there. <laughs> Whoop, came off there. So that's it. Harbor Freight, $14. This is the box if you want to. Drill master item. And you can buy these at Home Depot, but they're a little bit bulkier, a little heavier, a little fancier, and you know, $35, $40. This thing's lightweight and plastic. All right, now for the fun part. Got the neck mounted here. I am gonna put a little soap on the threads. See how hard one of these goes. Looks like it's going pretty slick. All right, that's it. I'll finish it up, but uh, a little bit of soap seemed to make it go real slick, and I'll get these tight. Adjust the angle here a little bit since there's a little play. I've already got the, all the tuners on. All I have left to do after that is string it up, is put my string tree on. And I've got two of them, and they both have the same size spacer. So I'm probably going to stick with the conventional just over here by the second tuning peg, maybe a little closer, but these screws are pretty long, so they should hold pretty well. And then we'll see how it plays. I don't know if it's gonna play right or not. Well, that was actually pretty easy. There it is with the new neck on. Looks like it fits really good. Looks like it can still get into the truss rod nut. One thing I did notice that you know, this old lacquered finish on the necks, it really is pretty uh, sticky. You never really think about it, but your fingers stick to it kind of. And this uh, roasted surface is really slick. So I hope that helps in bending because those little frets are going to be a, a real chore, I think. Pretty ragged this morning, so I'm not going to show myself, but... This thing was basically plug and play, and all that fear I had of cracking the wood and all that, that was unfounded. I mean, that, don't believe everything you read on the forums. I mean, it was like, screw it on and string it up. It's fantastic. And it, Those little frets aren't too bad. And that slick uh, roasted maple is pretty cool. I, I didn't put the string tree on yet. I'm going to use the strings as a guide so I get it right in the right spot. I don't even know if it needs it. I mean, it seems okay. And the nut height is absolutely perfect. It, actually, if anything, it's on the high side, but I think it's great. All I did was screw it on, string it up, and it's ready. I'll have to change my playing style a little bit on this one.
that's it, and highly recommend it. I might have to adjust the angle of the neck. I got quite a bit of room over here on this uh, bottom side on the E. Not quite as much on the top. It looks like I need to tilt the neck down just a hair to get the string to move over a little bit, but that's easy. Just loosen up those four screws and tilt it a little bit, tighten it back up. There's a little space over here, so I know I can do it and it'll be perfect. All right, I hope you got something out of this, but I highly recommend the Music Craft. I haven't even checked the, the relief or anything. I mean, it just seems to be perfect already. So that is cool. All right. Talk to you guys later.